Hello there, good day. Welcome to this video series on Google C++ testing framework, which is sometimes also known as Google test, G test or GMock framework. I was trying to make a video series on this for quite some time and many people have requested me for that. So finally I managed to get started. So let's see what this Google C++ testing framework is and, and how we can use it. So the Google test, t-test or gmock, whatever you call it, it actually based on the XUnit architecture. XUnit is a architecture of writing unit test code. It is portable and reusable, so you can use the same test on Linux, Mac and Windows. It's used for writing unit test code in and for C++, so all the C++ naming, naming conventions, function scope rules, is applicable when we write the uh, unit test code in Google test. Let's start understanding about it with a hello world program or test hello world pro program rather. So before we can write a test hello world, we need to install um, the Google test in our machine, whatever that machine, Linux, Mac or Windows. To install that, we have to go to this particular GitHub page. You'll get to know the instruction, how to download and make the libraries of Google test and we will start after installation how to write up a simple hello world test hello world program. Okay once you start Google test on your system uh, you will get two libraries called gtest.a and gtest underscore main.a. I am using Ubuntu so I am using uh, Ubuntu libraries. Uh, not only we have these two libraries but we will also include the header file called gtest.h and to start running google test is to call this particular line of code which is testing scope resolution init google test this we will talk in a later video what this parameter does and it returns all run all test so this is the bare minimum skeleton of the code let's try to compile it and run it so in ubuntu when i have actually used it i have created a file test.cpp and I am linking again gtest gtest main okay so it is compiled and if I just run the code you can see it says run zero test and everything is passed because as of now we haven't run any test now how to add a test case over here so test is written by having a writing a capital test as it is and it takes two parameters you can uh, think of think of it as a function the first parameter is a test name and within that test the second parameter is subtest name let's say i'm saying subtest one okay and whatever we uh, assert in this particular test case will be the result of uh, the particular test for example let me assert for success i'll say assert true uh, for example it's one is equal to one okay let me go ahead and save it uh, clear compile it again and run it again so you can see that my google test is giving me the output that it had run one test which name is test name dot subtest one it took this much time and it is passed and if i change it to one equal to two this is incorrect so if I go ahead and compile it again, oh, sorry, I have to say one equal to two. So let me go ahead and compile it again. And if I run my code, it says failed because this is what happened. The actual was false, expected what true. I can change the assert true as assert false because I expecting it to be false. And if I run the test now, you'll see it passes because I am asserting it for false. Similarly, I can create another test uh, like this. And let's say I'm calling it subtest2. And I am saying assert true over here. So basically in this case, what I am looking for is that one test should pass and one test should fail. Let me go ahead and run it and see this is what has happened. It says there is a test name dot subtest1 is okay, subtest1 is okay, but when you are trying to run subtest2, 
we see the failure this is what is being expected and this is fail so this is the way we can write multiple tests in google test now uh, the output is like test name dot subtest one first it runs then test name dot subtest two it runs basically the test name is the name of the test i can have test name two over here and subtest one of test name two let me go ahead and run it and see uh, compile it clear it and run it now you can see that it is actually taking test name two as a separate test you can see there is a space one test is successful and it is treating it as a different test case so this is the way you can create one main test and many sub test and something like this so this is the very basic hello world of the google test assert true and assert false are very basic way of uh, checking the validity of something there are many other assertion failures uh, let's look into those the second topic which i want to touch upon in this particular video is assertions so assertions as any programmer would know that it's it's an way of checking the output as true or false so in google test assertions leads to three particular scenarios scenario number one is whether the assertion is successful scenario number two is assertion is failed but the failure is non-fatal assertion number three is um, assertion is failed but the failure is fatal so the difference between non-fatal and fatal failure is that in case of non-fatal failure the execution of code of particular test doesn't stop it continues after the failure also but while in the case of fatal failure the execution of test code stops at that point that place okay so we have seen there is something called assert true and assert false there are other assertion mechanism in google test like assert eq i mean it means assert equal to and equal to can also be checked using expect equal to so what is the difference between these two so in case of success there is no difference because the assertion is successful but expect eq leads to non-fatal failure while assert eq leads to fatal failures so wherever we are using assert in google test it leads to fatal failure wherever we are using expect it leads to non-fatal failures let's see let's go ahead and see the code okay so now we know there are three types of output coming out of an assertion uh, they are success non-fatal assertion and fatal assertion so let me uh, just uh, remove it for simplicity purpose and assert true and assert false are um, they are fatal assertions so for example let me write uh, c out after assertion and i'll say and l let me save it and compile and run it so you can see that whatever i have uh, printed c out it is actually displayed over here but if i change the assertion in a way so that it fails let me save it compile run it again you can see that this after assertion doesn't execute so because this fails over here and it then come out of this particular test case now let's talk about uh, something called which is generally being used uh, for which non-fatal assertion version is available it's called assert eq so what i can do instead of saying assert true and false i can say assert eq eq is equal and we don't compare it by equal to we do it by a comma so one is equal to one so it should be successful and let me go ahead and run it and see it is successful and after assertion is printed and if i change it slightly as one two which is a failed statement uh, should fail we can see it fail and after assertion doesn't uh, execute now the non-fatal equi equivalent of assert eq is exp eq so this condition remains a failure condition and let me go ahead and compile and run it again and you can see that even if the uh, test is actually failed 
it doesn't stop the test it after assertion gets printed over here so it's a non-fatal assertion non-fatal means the execution doesn't stop it and if we use expect the expect versions are non-fatal and assert versions are fatal okay so we have seen um, equal assert equal and expect equal and how we can use that there are various uh, um, various other macros which can be used uh, for not if for checking not equal we can use expect any and assert any for less than we can use expect lt assert lt for less than equal we can use expect le and assert le for greater than we can use expect gt and assert gt for greater than equal we can use expert ex, sorry expect g and assert g and it's not to mention that wherever we are using expect it's a non-fatal failure and wherever we are using assert it's a fatal failure so that's pretty much everything about this video uh, we'll see more examples in the upcoming videos uh, thanks a lot thanks for watching guys please do not forget to subscribe to continue getting notification for the upcoming videos thank you